We're going to make this here double welt pocket. Let's get into it. This is where I'm going to be sewing the pocket and on the back I've put a little bit of interfacing and what that does is just give structure and stability to the fabric for a cleaner finish. And then on the front I'm going to mark out the center of the pocket and the two sides. Center line, one side and the other. In my case the pocket's going to be six inches wide and a total of one inch tall. These are the two bits of fabric that are going to be the upper and lower lips of the pocket. And I like to make them about an inch wider than my pocket. So there's plenty to work with and we can trim the excess later. In terms of height, I need it to be tall enough for the up and down fold of the lip plus the seam allowance plus a little extra for the lining to eventually connect to. So my general rule is make it too big and trim later rather than having it too small. Once again, I've put interfacing on the back for the rigidity and structure. This is optional on fabrics, but I find after a few washes, this stuff softens up quite a bit anyways, but makes for a cleaner finish. However, if this is a very light fabric that you're working with. I would highly suggest using the interfacing just so it's going to be more manageable. I'm going to align both of these pieces with that line that I drew. I'm going to copy over the side markings. Whatever height I want the final pocket to be. I measure half that distance from the center out in each direction. In my case, I said an inch, so I go half an inch in each direction. Now I sew two parallel lines from here to here, and then another one from here to here. There we go. And then starting in the middle, I'm just going to trim out to the side up until about here. I don't want to cut this top layer just underneath. And I want to get as close as I can to this corner without actually cutting the stitch. So that's what it looks like on the back side. And I've done that on both sides. Then I can flip these both around to the other side. All right, there we go. That's the bottom. That's the top. I'm going to press them both to sit nice and flat. Pull these little triangles on each side back and press them to lie flat too. I'm going to mark the halfway point on top of the triangle on each side. Those markings become my guide as I roll down the top and bottom lips of the pocket. Give them a little crease to sit flat. Flip that around the other way and we can start to see what that's going to look like. We want to check to make sure the height on both of these are even. And in my case, I got a little gap in the middle here and I need to bring this side down just a touch and that one's a bit too high. I'm going to go ahead and give that a pressing to lay as flat as possible. And then along the bottom here, very close to the edge, I'm going to run a seam from one side to the other to lock this bottom lip in place. I'm using a zipper foot with the open side just so I can see 
and get a little bit closer to that edge. There we go. Then I'm going to attach this lining onto this bottom piece here. So I flip that over like so. I've made it the same width as the lip piece. And in terms of the height, essentially it's going to be folded like this and connect there and then connect to the top roughly here. So however tall you want it to be, that's up to you. Line those two up, stitch that together. Boom, there we go. Fold it over and press, run a top stitch, core, just. Hmm. Back to the right side of the garment. And let's say this were a back pocket, for example. Chances are we want a buttonhole here. Now would be the time to do it. Much easier now than later. I have a whole video all about buttonholes linked below if you need that. It's a buttonhole. Now we're going to sew the rest of the way around. The key is to start a few stitches in here just so we cover up where we left off. Go around and then when we get to the other side, again, just cover up a few of these stitches at the bottom here. There we go. Now flipping it around to the back, we're going to take this top panel here and push it as far down as we can. Give that a little pressing and then take the other side of the pocket lining, line those two up and sew that together. Press this to lay nice and flat as well. Same with the bottom of the pocket. Also, it'd be a good idea to finish the raw edge on this top seam allowance here. And same with this little flappy bit here. A zigzag stitch is the most basic way of doing that. Then we're gonna close the sides of the pockets. Again, we wanna finish the raw edges. We did give ourselves plenty of extra on the sides of the pockets here. So if we want to, we can just trim that to clean it up a little bit. Finally, we're going to do a zigzag stitch from top to bottom on each side. A for the strengthening of the tension over the lifetime that'll happen here. But also it just cleans everything up real nice and tidy in the corner. There you go. That is a double welt pocket. If you're following along, congratulations. You've made a double welt pocket. Let me know what you want to learn next down in the comments. Maybe you want to join my sewing group chat. In that case, head on over to Patreon and sign up. Thank you to those of you who do support me on Patreon. Thank you. An extra special shout out to these top tier supporters. And maybe, maybe you want to watch this video next something sewing related must be interesting you know so <laughs> all right